Hey guys, it has been a long time since we've had some astrophotography content, but we're back. So, Jupiter, Saturn, these are some old pictures. We can do way better now. So, I'm gonna go over all the new stuff that I've learned for planetary and see what kind of images we can come out with on the other end. Hopefully a Jupiter and a Saturn. Maybe a lunar one too, we'll see. So, there are five general things that go into a good planetary image. The first thing is a good telescope. Now, you actually do not need computerization in your telescope to get a good planetary image. You can actually track manually on a bunch of these equatorial mounts and whatnot and actually come up with a pretty good image. But we also want a big aperture. Big aperture increases your maximum theoretical magnification, which comes in in a second where we want a big focal length. Now, the telescope that I have has a native focal length of 650 millimeters, which is not nearly big enough because the planets are tiny, tiny, tiny in angular size. But using our two out of five in this factor list, we can use telescope add-ons like this Barlow lens. Barlow lenses increase the effective focal length of your telescope and uh, thusly increase the magnification. So this is a 2x Barlow lens, slapping it on to my 650 millimeter scope will get me a uh, 1300 millimeter scope. I normally slap two 2x Barlows on, and that gets me a pretty good magnification of the target. Now, number three, our camera. So, it is very, 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 very nice if you can get a camera that has not only live view, but actual video recording of whatever target it is. Um, I was fortunate enough to stumble upon and kind of fix this used Canon uh, T6, which has video natively, but the way that we actually acquire our frames for planets is we actually take video. We want as many pictures as we can because instead of normal where we're trying to deal with noise, we're actually trying to deal with the wobble in the atmosphere, the turbulence that's up there that bends and refracts the light just a little bit. So we want as many frames as we can and we want to pick the frames in that that actually are good with the least amount of wobble. And that kind of naturally brings us into our number four, shooting conditions. You want a still night, you want a cold night. Cold is good for noise as always, but cold is generally kind of better for wind too. If it's really breezy, your telescope is going to be sloshing around everywhere because it's getting blown around, especially if you have a large aperture and it's not super heavy. But you generally want a calm night. It can actually even be foggy too. Since the plants are so bright, it doesn't necessarily matter. So keep your eyes out for those generally clear but still nights is what's really important. This is the same for planets, this is the same for solar, this is the same for lunar all of that. You just want a still night. And then after you get all your frames, this brings us into our number five, post-processing. So people normally take things into PIP, the planetary imaging preprocessor, then hop over into AutoStacker, which helps select the best frames from PIP, and then into Registax, which lets you do wavelet adjustments. We'll hop into the software for this in just a little bit. But that's a general overview of what goes into a good planetary image. then when we finally do get one of those calm nights for the love of god <laughs> remember to collimate your scope this is such an easy thing to forget but collimating your scope is absolutely crucial to making sure you've got a good consistent fine image all right and now that we're collimated we can use our finder scope to help hone in on the planet uh, if you do have a computerized mount celestron has a great alignment tool called solar system align where if you get the planet in frame you can just hit solar system align and it'll track assuming you're identifying the object correctly and uh, a great resource for that would be Stellarium. When you actually get on target here's what live view should look like. I have it really really overexposed right now but oh, see Jupiter's moons right there? Yep so we can pull our sensitivity back a little bit so we can hopefully actually get some detail on Jupiter. 
Uh, let's go to 1 400. 400. There we go. Uh, so right there. And then, fortunately, since we have live view on this camera, as well as video taking capability, we can use live view to help us really narrow in on that focus. So this part gets really tricky if your focuser is not the best, which mine is not the best. Some Crayford focusers out there are really nice for this, but you can do 5x and 10x, 10x digital zoom and really try and hone in on where specifically that focus is. This is probably the most difficult part of the entire ordeal. But once you're satisfied with the focus, you just want to start taking frames. So this is when you'd start acquiring video if you have the option. I'm not going to do that right now because it's not the stillest night, conditions aren't that great, but I'm going to be coming back pretty quick in order to get some Jupiter and Saturn frames. But that live view for helping focus is a really, really helpful tip in order to sort of make sure your focus is as crisp as it can be because that's incredibly impactful for these planetary images. So we'll hop back whenever I'm actually out shooting for real. <laughs> it is a bit windy tonight, but look at the focus on Jupiter right there. Look at that. We have the big red spot on this side too, and we're gonna stack it all up and it's gonna be amazing. So let's get over to it. All right, so then we drop over our new file in PIP for video. I know we do two minutes at least for Jupiter, but you don't wanna go more than uh, I think three or maybe four because it actually spins really, really fast. So just hit planetary down here. That fixes most of your settings for you and then hit start processing. And then this normally is pretty quick, but we'll come back right when it's done. All right, and then once it's done, it'll give you this kind of message. So you go close out pip and then bring up auto stackert. Should open two windows. And then you bring over your new AVI file. Uh, AutoStackert doesn't necessarily like normal video formats, so AVI is what you want it to be. And then you select Planet here instead of Surface. Um, normally the input settings are fine, and then you hit Analyze. It'll run through some of your frames and create a little quality graph. So the left is the highest quality, the right is the lowest quality. Um, the, the little gray part of this plot is how they uh, what how the quality looked over time so you can see like if there are certain like windy patches or whatnot but the green is the overall filtered quality down from highest to lowest so normally I leave this at 10 and then uh, don't align RGB if you have space do drizzle drizzle is good but it does require a lot of uh, space temporarily for it to write to but you come over here to the second window and you want to select a size for your alignment points. Generally pretty small is good for this and minimum brightness is generally pretty low but you want a good amount of points on here. You want generally below 3000 but the more the merrier you know. So you place the grid if that looks good then go ahead and hit stack. And then this will run through, and afterwards we'll show you what the result looks like. So that finished real quick, but this is what our auto stacker image looks like. So we're going to pull this guy now from auto stacker and open up our Registax, which Registax gets our wavelet adjustments. So bring that over here. Drop this guy into Registax. And then here's where you do a bunch of wavelet adjustments. So typically on here, I try and pull up the histogram. That looks pretty good. Uh, RGB balance, auto balance it to where things are 
sort of the same color so you're not outweighing specific things. For wavelets, I normally mess with 1, 4, and 6, but I have a little preset for Jupiter. I guess it's 1, 5, and 6 in this case. And it sharpens things up a bit. If we want to darken the image a little bit, we should be able to do so by stretching the histogram this way a little bit. And that really pulls out some of the detail. So we have our big red spot right there, and there's some little changes in the bands right there, which is really nice. And you can tweak these quite a bit. You can up your contrast and brightness and everything, but normally I just mess with the wavelets, the histogram, and the RGB balance. But this more or less gets us our final image for that. One of the coolest things that you can do with Jupiter is combine a bunch of these frames and actually watch it rotate. So the, the rotating angularly this way is actually the field rotation that I commonly talk about in my DSO videos. But the rotation this way is actually just Jupiter spinning on its axis, which is really, really cool. Each of the frames is two minutes, so this is about, I think it was 10 frames in total, so this is a little more than 20 minutes, because I'm not like doing perfect acquisition of time, but Jupiter spins incredibly fast and it's really cool. It's something that you can actually sort of acquire in real time, which is really neat. And then lastly, I did promise Saturn, so don't think I forgot. I got some videos of it while I was out getting Jupiter. Uh, it's a little bit wobbly at first, as all these normal videos do, because I'm touching the camera and that causes vibrations at such a high focal length. But we got some really nice still time on Saturn, which aggregated together, put through all the processing, turned into this really nice image, which you can see a little bit of the Cassini division. The shadow on Saturn, on its ring behind right there, is really neat. And... Overall, the color of this is really nice, and there's some pretty fine details in there as well. So I was pretty satisfied with that. But it really becomes apparent how much things improved whenever you look at the new versus the old. So if, you, if you're willing to put the time in and get to know your equipment and get to know what you need to about how things move and the stars and everything, you can really see yourself improve in real time. So I hope this helped you guys out. This was really fun to make, and I hope you all stick around to keep watching me improve. Thanks for watching, everyone.